Now we've finished the days in the month function, but we haven't called it from anywhere. And we're not going to call it up here where we've called the other things because this is information that our next function needs. So uh, we'll be calling it from that function. And this next function is calendar days. And what this is going to do uh, here, remember that our example is, so, so far we've got the caption and we've got this heading across the top. Now we need to fill up the days. But notice how when the days fall in the month will vary depending on the month and the year. We already know we can figure out how many. This is August, so there's 31 days. But if it were you know, June, then it would be just 30 days. So we have a method that can tell us how many days. But we need to figure out, uh, we do need to know how many days, but we also need to know when the day starts. Like, does the first start on a Wednesday? Does it start on a Monday? Does it start on a Friday? When does that first day start? And then once we do that, then we can, we want to write, the num we want to write some blank spaces, and then we want to start writing the numbers of the month. And notice that we're going to have to also determine when to change from row one row to the next. So this top one is a row, and then the next one is a row, and then the next one is a row. So we've got to do all of this coding uh, programmatically, right? We're going to do it in our program that we're going to write an opening TR tag, some blank um, TDs, then some filled in TDs, and then a closing TR tag, another opening TR tag. See the process? And we've got to be able to code that all in. So let's start by figuring out how to do the initial blank spaces, right? That's a good place to start, right? So we'll get this calendar going. It's called calendar days with the calendar abbreviated, and it has one parameter. So if we go down here at the bottom and we'll just add it down here, keyword function spelled correctly, and then the calendar days. And in here, we're going to put the parameter calendar date. And this is our function. Now we need to figure out um, how many days there are, right? And so to do that, first we need to figure out so figure out, oops, what day the first is on. Right. And that will depend on this calendar date, both the month and the year, and we need to figure out which weekday that is. So what we're going to do is, now this, this might be the date that they're sending us might be the 13th, or in this case, it might be the 24th, right? And we want to know when the first is. Well, there, this first date and this 24th date have a couple things in common. They have the same month and the same year. And so we can use this month and the year from the current date, and then we can choose the day as one. And they're sending us the current date. And so we can pull the year. We know how to do that already, right? Get the full year. We know how to get the month. We use the get month method. So we know how to do that. We know how to set the day to one. Well, uh, notice that when we're creating a date object, there are a variety of ways to do that. And we've done it a couple of ways. We've created a date object without any arguments, and that gives us the current day. And we've also created a date object using a date string, right? That's how we've done it in this code up here at the very beginning. Let's go look at that one. And there we're creating a date with a date string, and that's that option. But now we're going to have a month and a, um, a month and a year. And when we use the get month and the get year methods, what we end up is with numbers. And this, this um, option here allows us to send numbers to create a date object. We can send the year in four digit number. We can send the month in a two digit number. And this will work on the day in a single digit. And this is, so this is the one that we want to use to create the first day of the month, a date that reflects the first day of the month. 
And we will not need to send it hours, minutes, seconds, or milliseconds. So those can be, those that have default values, so they'll just default to those default values. And we'll just send the year, the month, and the day. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a date object. And this is our um, first day, right? So we're just gonna say the day equals, and we're gonna create a new date object. And we wanna send it the month. So what can we do? We can use this date, cal date, and we can get do get full year. So that's the year we need to send it. The next one is the month we need to send it. So we can do the same thing. We can use cal date, but now we can get the month. So call the get month method, and that will give us a numeric version of the month. And then the next one we need to add is the day, right? Which day of the month is it? And we know we want it the first day, so this is going to be one the day one and we'll let all of the time values default to their value to what their values are so that's how we're going to get a date object that is the first day of the month